Um, I know that you teach on how to fan the flame of hunger through the supernatural. Can you expound on that? I know you sent me some really great scriptures. Let's talk about that for a minute to help people get more hungry. Well, Jesus said, if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you shall be filled. So the thing is, if you're not hungry, you're not going to experience much. Think mm. about this. This isn't natural. If you're hungry, you will rearrange your schedule to eat. Depending on your type of hunger, you may go for a snack or you may actually go for a full meal. Right. Hunger motivates you and it sets your priorities. So in the Jesus. same way with the supernatural, you have to be hungry for it if you're going to experience it. In John 7, Jesus said, if you're thirsty, come to me. So it's not just automatic. It's not, it's what case or all, or all, whatever will be, will be. If God wants me to experience it, then he's sovereign. He'll just do it. Yes, he's sovereign. But he says, if you want it, if you desire it, if you're mm. hungry, if you're thirsty, you will experience it. And mm. so many people think they've experienced all there is to God. Let me tell you, wherever you are, you have not experienced all there That's is right. to God. He is the almighty God, the all powerful right. God, the all sufficient God. And he has more for you. Go ahead, say out loud, put it in the chat. Say, God has more for me. Wherever you are, say out loud and put it in the mm. chat. God has more Come for on. me. God yeah. has more for you. Wherever you are, yes, you've experienced some great things. I'm not knocking your experiences, but guess what? There is more. He is oh. El Shaddai. He's the God who is more mm. than a you really think you've seen the best of God? You really think that, you know, we live in a day and age and where people talk about AI, they talk about, you know, the special effects that all the Hollywood producers do. Do you really think that the Holy Ghost is going to be outdone by AI and the special effects of Hollywood? He has special miracle signs and mm. wonders this time. He has more for you to experience. He is creative and he has for you, but you're going to have to hunger for it. You can't just say, oh, so great that God moved in Karen Raquel's life. So great that God moved in Miss Katie's life. Well, that's them. No, no, no. God wants to move in your life. He wants to shock and awe you. You know, we talk about the word reverence in the scripture. And yes, it means to respect God, but it also means reverential awe. There's so many Christians. You respect God. You obey God. You do the King James verse. You fear God, but it says Oh, when's the last time you had a whoa moment with God? When's the last moment you had a moment with God? It's like, wow, he blew my mind. That's what God wants to do on a regular basis. That's who he is. God has more for you. So you have to stay hungry. And what happens when you have supernatural encounters, when you watch this broadcast, when you go to church, when you read things in the book of Acts and through the Bible, see God do miracles, signs and wonders. It's just stirring. Hey, if God can do it for them, Absolutely. he can do it for me. There have been so many times and places and meetings I've been in, and I was honored to grow up in a church that believed in the move of the Holy Ghost. So I saw God do things all my life. But there have been times where I would go other places and I would experience it. I still remember the first time I went to Argentina and went to Pastor Claudio Frazon's church. And I saw how the glory moved through the building. It mm -hmm. caused me to be hungry for even more. And so exposure to the supernatural mm. increases your hunger. And so before I was like, man, I've seen a lot and I'm expecting a lot. But after I went to that church and spent weeks there, I'm like, I want even more. And I'm convinced it's not just for Argentina. I'm convinced it's for America. And America, it is your time. You know, honestly, uh, a lot of us think we've got to stir up everything to get a miracle and then, you know, stir up our hunger in order to get a miracle. But I love what you're saying, that if we just go to places, uh, sit in front of teachings, follow people that have this, this supernatural, like yourself, like this ministry, you know, and like other brothers and sisters in the Lord that we have, then you're going to get hungry. Because a lot of times people are fighting depression. They're fighting. I have been warring. I've been battling. I'm overwhelmed. I'm being attacked. I'm underneath the, this demonic structure. I, I don't have any hunger left. I'm burnt out. Right. So I love this key of just go find somebody who's walking in it and yeah. you'll be ignited again. Is that yeah. what you're saying? Yes. That's what I'm saying. I still take time and I go watch the old or Roberts Crusades yes. <laughs> from decades ago and watch wow. those key memes in the tent and watch all the miracles mm. that took place. And I watch and go, whoa, it's like, man, God can do it again. You so know, one good. of the ways I learned to walk in the supernatural was I took time and I watched videos of people flowing. And I watched people praying. People. I watched it again and again and again. And I read the testimonies and the stories of Catherine Kuhlman, Mariah Woodward Edder, John G. Lake, Smith Wigglesworth. I would read these stories again and again of a Zeus Street, and it stirred something up in me to where I believe that God can do it again. Mm -hmm. And so for you, you said, hey, I'm struggling to be hungry. Hey, take the struggle. Don't stress about it. Go watch miracles happen. Be encouraged. 
Get your cup of coffee. Get your cup <laughs> of tea. Watch those Oral Roberts Crusades. Watch those Crusades of God doing miracles and let it work on your heart. Let it work on your mind. Let it yes. work on your imagination and it will increase your hunger. Okay, that's a simple direction, guys. That's a simple thing that any one of us can do. YouTube is full of that kind of stuff. Okay, go and pack up on that. Instead of scrolling through your TikTok and your YouTube and all that at night before you go to bed, turn on one of those old time revivals and get ignited in the fire. You know, yeah. I want, I'd like for you guys to break off depression, anxiety, burnout, because people are sitting there going, I can't even barely, you know, go on the YouTube page. I'm so fried. I, I I can't barely do anything. I can barely even think. Can we minister out of that place of need? People are desperate. They want to be hungry, but they're so exhausted they can't. So let's minister out of that need for a minute, okay? I'll, I'll cut you guys loose. Go ahead. Depression, you bow right now to the authority of Jesus. I command you to loose your claws off of the mind, souls, and hearts of God's people. Depression, Back away, tormenting, lying spirits. Shut your mouth and back away. I come against that anxious little gremlin on someone's shoulder, always reminding about everything that's happened, always yapping the ear. Hush in the authority of Jesus. We release the peace of God. We release the joy of God. And Father, I pray that you grant them divine strength that they'll be strong in you and the power of your might. And I pray right now, they experience the joy of the Lord, wherever they are, because it is your joy that is our strength. And as you said in Psalms, we go from one decade to another, it's by reason of strength. And so we release the joy of the Lord to flow through every single screen and device, to break the bondages of depression, of anxiety, of despair. We release the joy of God. And I'm telling you, my friend, wherever you are, begin to smile. Rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice. God has a wonderful plan for your life. He has not forgotten about you. Good days are here. Better days are ahead. You, your best is not behind you. Your best is yet to come. You have a reason to smile because God loves you. He is good. And his plan for your life flows from his goodness and love for you. Get ready for a quick turnaround. Yes, you had a setback, but get ready for your comeback because God loves you. And joy is now in you and your strength. Thank you, my God. Now, God, but I, okay, I feel a buzzing around my head and my arms are getting warm. So that simple decree and command of removing these demonic tormenting spirits, it's being activated. It's being released through the airwaves right now into your home. Okay, I don't say stuff unless I mean it. Okay, and I want it right now to create judgment against those nighttime visitations from the devil that cause you to lose your rest and make you to be more paranoid, more frightful, more frightened, more yeah. exhausted. I judge those spirits right now. I draw a bloodline around your house and a ring of fire in the name of Jesus. I ask that warring angels be released to protect you in the night and that there would be a guard set at your doors, at your windows, on your property line, and at every place right now in the name of Jesus. And there would be a breaking, a breaking of that demonic spirit. Somebody I see online right now, you have an object in your home. And you know that thing bothers you even when you think about it, but because somebody gave it to you or because it means something to somebody in your house, you're, you're doing a people-pleasing, a man-pleasing thing, and you will not get rid of it. Or maybe it's something of value like a, a gold or coin that somebody gave you. That's what witches do. They give you gold or silver coins so that knowing that you'll want to hold on to it or a brick so you want to hold on to it, but it's got a curse on it. Get rid of that demonic altar that's allowing a landing strip, a gateway to be opened in your home for that harassment that you've gone through and you cannot escape. If this is you, you need to chat it in right now. Throw that away. And then oil your house. We oil your house with the presence of the Holy Spirit on every window, every door, every rafter, every beam, every floor, your bed, your pillows, your possessions. Right now, I release the oil of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Go and take your oil and anoint it in the natural as I anoint it with the Holy Spirit in the supernatural. And I break that assignment off of you so that you can start to burn again. You can start to be on fire again in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Now, you wrote a really good book. Um, this is amazing s stuff. It is uh, such a good book. It's no longer Mere Mortals is the title of it. 
Man, you tell some crazy stories in here. You give tips on how people can be no longer mortal by being supernatural and, and having operating in the divine power of God. Tell us a little bit about the book. So the book has been kind of always been in my heart to share with people that it's not just supposed to be a few special people to live supernatural. It's for all of us. And one of the things we do in the book is that we use modern day parables, superhero movies, to help people understand how God moved today. And so we give seven keys, seven simple things for you to do to practice as a lifestyle that becomes your habit to make the miraculous your normal. And so that's what we share no longer in mere motor, seven keys to living the supernatural life. Yeah, look, do we, we're going to put a link up, guys, so we can get it. Now, this was featured on Sid Roth, I believe, wasn't it? Is that right? Yes, it was. It was yeah. such an honor to be on this program and share about this book. Yeah, you know, um, Sid, if, some, if Sid brings something on, that means it's really good. He's very pickums, okay? Sid's very picky about his guests, and he's picky about what he puts his name on. And so we know that this is an amazing work. So get it, guys. No Longer Mere Mortals by Carrick Butler.